Hello, students. Um, well, we are a little bit limited here, and therefore, page 61, it talks about the hamper paddle or the sustenuto paddle. And um, to use that, we do need usually the acoustic piano or the pianos, the more advanced electric piano that we have in the piano lab. Um, if you have acoustic piano, please feel free to try that at home. The damper paddle is talking about the very right paddle um, on the piano, and it will simply sustain the sound. So if I press the right pedal and I played something on the piano, and I lifted my hands, you can still hear the, the notes, right? And so the harp song um, tries to imitate that on page 61. I'm going to play you the harp song first, and then I'm going to switch to the um, camera on top and teach that to you. If you have the pedal, try to record your homework with the pedal. If you don't, if you have a more simple electric keyboard, just don't worry about the pedal at this, uh, at this point and just record as is. So here we go, harp song. Again, it's in three, four. One, two, Hopefully you saw how fluently I move my wrists. Um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to actually record at this angle. So I try not to actually lift my fingers off the keyboard. I just give the sound. But the position, I, I, I uh, let my fingers stay or hover above the notes. We use here in that harp song our two chords that I explained in the previous tutorial, in the previous video, right? The first one is the G chord. And the second one is the D7 chord. Hopefully you are familiar with that and you have practiced those chords enough times, um, then page 61 will not be a problem. I do want to see um, you incorporating your wrist. The wrist has to be very flu uh, fluent and very fluid, like you have water here. And so if I wanted to lift your wrist up, I was able to. Um, ask your friend or a parent or some, someone near you if they can actually move your wrist up and down. That means that your hand is relaxed. If they try to lift it and they're, they, they are unable to, obviously you have a very harsh uh, wrist here and you have to relax. The exercise to relax in your wrist is really simply just kind of dropping your hands. So when you play that, it's almost like the hand is breathing. Yeah, now I'm not using the pedal, just the hands. Okay, now it's time to switch to the above overview. Let me see how I can do this. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm going to start with the first line. I'm starting from G. Again, this is in G major. We have briefly talked about key signature um, before we left for our long break. And we talked about that G major has an F sharp. So usually you would have the key signature next to the treble and bass clef at the beginning of the piece. But here we actually see the F sharp instead written in the score. All right, so the first line, we have just the triads, and we call those triads broken triad, because instead of playing it as blocked, we're playing it as a melody, broken up. So here we go, I'm going to play the first line. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Okay, I kind of went to the second uh, line because I have just um, thought about something here. Of course, if this is too difficult for you to play, which might be and switching right away to the second line, what I would recommend is just to practice it as chords. So you take the first three notes of each measure and you combine them uh, together, right? 
I tried. So I'm going to play one more time the first line, and this time I'm going to hold it for three counts and play all three notes at the same time. One, two, three. One, two, three. Left hand. One, two. Right the wrist goes up. One, two, three. Same can be done with the second line. So here we go. One, two, three. One, two, going to the third line. One, two, third line. One, two, three. One, two, etc. So you practice like this a few times, and after that, you will have no problem playing this piece. One of the beauties of this piece is actually to play very fluently. Um, it sometimes reminds me of a stream, right? Or, or some water, uh, very continuously. So I'm going to play it for you just the first two lines because the third and fourth line are the same. And uh, try to join me. Again, you can just do the left hand or right hand. Um, and if you feel comfortable, both hands. So here we go. One two, three. I'm going to try that again a little bit faster. One, two, three. switch back for one second all right so this is the harp um, one thing that I didn't explain because it's really explained very well here is how to play the pedal so in the, on this page page 61 in the corner right here it talks about where to press the pedal down and when to lift it up and the pedal in this piece uh, is written the same way so pedal down and you hold it down we usually hold the pedal for the duration of the harmony. What do I mean by that? If we have a triad that is the same triad for four measures, which in this case, that's what we have, we can hold the pedal down that whole time. But we have to switch the pedal when we have new harmony or new chord. Listen for a second what will happen if I don't switch the pedal. It will become very, very muddy. So listen, I'm going to go a little bit faster. Here there's a lot of sounds. I don't know if it will come out in the recording, but hopefully it will. Um, so we want to try to escape that. If I were to play something different, uh, it probably would be much more obvious. Like for example, something quick, like, like this. Instead, if I hold the pedal down, listen what will happen. See that. Yeah, it becomes something uh, like that, very, very mighty. So anyway, this is the tutorial for page 61 um, for the damper paddle and for the harp song. Have fun practicing.